Victoria's Secret was founded in 1977, and since then it's become a worldwide success. But after decades as a top lingerie retailer, the brand's parent company has been announcing the closure of dozens of stores. Has Victoria's Secret lost its mojo? In April 2019, Victoria's Secret parent company L Brands announced that Victoria's Secret would be closing 53 stores across North America throughout the year. For those not following the company closely, the news likely came as a shock. After all, the lingerie brand has been the number one of its kind for years. However, as Business Insider reported, the planned store closings were the result of the company's steadily declining performance across the board. The 2019 announcement came on the heels of a similar one in 2018, in which the company revealed plans to shutter 30 stores across the country. Previously, the had averaged around 15 store closings per year, with the sudden jump caused by slumping sales. In November 2018, Ed Razik, the chief marketing officer of L Brands, made a splash in the headlines for controversial comments he delivered during an interview with Vogue. Razik faced difficult questions regarding the ever-evolving market of women's wear and why Victoria's Secret has largely remained stagnant in terms of the type of women they choose to market to and represent. While explaining why the company doesn't feature larger women or transgender women in its yearly fashion show, Razik shot down the idea, saying, "...it's like, why doesn't your show do this? Shouldn't you have transsexuals in the show? No. No, I don't think we should." Well, why not? Because the show is a fantasy. It's a 42-minute entertainment special. That's what it is. It is the World Series of Intimate Apparel. <laughs> it is the Super Bowl of underpants. <laughs> Razik also threw shade at Third Love, an online women's wear retailer that offers an array of sizes for just about every body type, saying, "...we're nobody's third love, we're their first love, and Victoria's Secret has been women's first love from the beginning." Razik also spoke dismissively in the Vogue interview about the possibility of including plus-size models in the fashion show, but those comments did nothing but further prove a growing suspicion that the world-famous lingerie brand is more out of touch than ever before. His claim of consumers having no interest in seeing plus-size bodies represented is simply untrue. That's evidenced by the success that plus-size women's wear retailer Lane Bryant saw after relaunching its mega-popular hashtag I'm no Angel campaign in 2017. The company made a splash with this campaign by airing an ad during the 2017 Primetime Emmy Awards that featured plus-size models of different shapes and sizes, urging women to own their cellulite, tummy flap, and stretch marks. During its heyday, Victoria's Secret was famous for its sultry selection of bras, underwear, and lingerie sets. Of course, many of its pieces were decidedly not appropriate for everyday wear, but the brand solidified itself as the go-to place to purchase special date night surprises, sexy loungewear, and Christmas gifts you probably wouldn't want to open in front of the whole family. However, nothing stays the same forever. While feeling bold and sexy might have been a priority for consumers 10 or 15 years ago, comfort and ease of wear are now more important considerations for women shopping for undergarments. A 2018 Forbes article cited a blog blog post from a former professional bra fitter who revealed that Victoria's Secret bra fitters reportedly aren't certified, leading to inaccurate measurements and discomfort. Major celebrities have apparently had enough with Victoria's Secret as well, and in the age of social media, they can easily start a ripple effect among their followers by voicing their opinions and bringing to light their own issues with the retailer. In November 2017, the day before the Victoria's Secret fashion show was set to film, plus-size model Ashley Graham took to Instagram to post a lingerie-clad photo of herself strutting down a runway, complete with a photoshopped pair of angel wings. Without taking an outright jab at Victoria's Secret, Graham proved that any body type is worthy of angel status, not just the unattainable airbrushed bodies of Victoria's Secret models. In 2018, plus-size model Tess Holliday left some choice words on Twitter for Ed Razik following his Vogue interview. Who needs VS anyway? They never supported plus-size ladies, and now they are trying to diss my trans sisters? Hell nah. Kiss my fat ass, Victoria's Secret. Along with declining sales and controversial comments, Victoria's Secret is also struggling with a sullied reputation in consumers' eyes. In a November 2018 article, the New York Times noted that Victoria's Secret is still the leading U.S. lingerie brand. But it also cited a consumer study from September 2017 that found that 68% of consumers like the brand, quote, less than they used to, and a whopping 60% of consumers think that Victoria's Secret feels forced or fake. Heidi Zack, chief executive officer of Third Love, told the Times that she often felt embarrassed after shopping at Victoria's Victoria's Secret, as she explained it, "...I came out and I took the pink-striped bag and stuffed it in my bag because I was embarrassed I'd been shopping there. Nothing about the brand, the aesthetic, the product, nothing really resonated with me." Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon! Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one!